Hey everyone and welcome. So on this video, I'm going to cover how to set up a project for the web in just a few minutes, how to set up your first project and what the model driven app for project for the web looks like. So let's get started. So before we can create our first project, we need to assign licenses to our users. And that can be done either from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center or from your Azure Active Directory. Now, I already have a license assigned. At the time of this recording, I do have a Project Online Professional license, but that's a, that, that is subject to change in the near future. All right, so I'm here at project.microsoft.com. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on New Blank project and if you're doing this for the first time it'll take a couple of minutes before a first project can be created because in the background what's what's actually happening is is a lot a load of solutions is being installed uh, for example the universal resource scheduling solution as well as the project solution and a few others as well all right so I'm gonna click on new blank project And what this does is, is this lands me on the grid page for the project that I'm going to create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Untitled Project. That's the name that is saved to CDS the minute that you create a new project. So I'm going to call this just a demo project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a calendar template. I have a specific calendar template template here selected. I want to do a video later on about calendar templates. By default, if you don't have your own template, you'll only you'll not see this drop down. So when you have more than one template, you'll you, you'll see a drop down with an option of the calendar templates that you can choose from. So I'm going to choose a start date for tomorrow, Friday. And I'm just going to close out. And then next one I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new task. Let's just call it task one. Let's call it task two, task three, and let's edit some durations as well. well. That looks good for one day. So weekends are not taken into account in my calendar template, so it's it's skipping the weekend. So the start date is the 25th and the finish date is the 27th because there is a weekend in between. And for task two, well, let's click on the 28th. And for task three, let's click on the 28th as well. So we have the basics of the task set. So on the grid view, the other options that I have is assigning a task to a certain resource or resources. I can add columns or I can remove columns. Now the nice thing about columns is when I add these columns and I navigate out of this project, back to project home, and then back to this project, the columns that I've chosen automatically appear. So so project remembers the columns that I choose for each specific project. Well, let's add a finish column as well. And what I can do is I can just drag these columns if I want to rearrange them. Let's actually get rid of this one. All right, so this is the grid view. It's fairly basic. Before we hop onto the board, let's just assign this task to myself, for example, and then for task two, we want John Doe to cover task two. So what happens when I'm adding John Doe on task two is project asks that it needs to be connected to a group first. So project uses office groups as a means of security. So what I can do is either create a new group or I can add this project to a group that I've created in the past. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new group for now. I can choose between private and public. I'm gonna keep it private. I'm gonna create an assign. Now I can add myself to task two as well. So I have two resources, resources on task two. And for task three, let's add, let's add Laura Doe on task three. So what project asks again is, do I want to add a member on this task and then to a group as well? So I'm going to do that. So now I have an office group created where I'm the owner, 
the group has John Doe as a member and Laura Doe as a member as well. All right, so let's hop on to the board view. What we have on the board is three boards by default. We have a non not started, in progress, and a completed board. And I can just drag and drop the, board, the, the tasks between boards as I see fit. And as you can see, project is really, really super fast. So all the changes that I make are really, really much, really just in real time. All right, so this is basically the board view. Let's hop onto the timeline view as well. So here on the timeline view on the Gantt chart, what I can do is click on this task, see its start date, finish date, duration, percentage complete, its bucket, and all these, you know, kind of basic things around task management at this point. But if I want to create dependencies, so let's say that task two should only start after task one, what I can do is I can just drag on this blue circle and drag to the other blue circle. So a dependency is made. So this task, end, task ends on the 28th. This one begins on the 28th. And I can just drag this task forward if I want it to make it start, let's say, let's say it starts all the way on November 4th. And if it's longer than three days, you can just increase the length by dragging on the task. All right, so task three, we want to create a dependency between task two and task three. So I'll just go to the blue circle. I'll make a dependency. The task automatically s jumps forward and I can just increase its length by dragging on the task. Now let's create that dependency again. Here we go. We can move it forward a bit. And we have our timeline all set up. Now the group members, I can look at the group members from the top right corner right here. I can see we have a private group and we have three members in that group. So really in just a couple of minutes, this is the very basics of setting up your first project. I'm not going to do a deep dive into the different features. I'll save that for later. But for now, what we can do is we can also look at the model driven side of things. So what does the model driven app look like? Well, first off, let's hop over to make.powerapps.com. And when we're at make.powerapps.com, what we want to do is we want to navigate to the default environment. So at this moment, project is automatically installed to the default environment. We can't choose a named environment or a specific environment for us to install project to. So, so right now, project is installed to our default environment. All right, so, so when we're in our default environment, what we'll do is we'll click on solutions. And on solutions, we can see all the solutions that have been installed by project. So we have the project solution, we have URS, we have scheduling. Now, as everything is on CDS, we can extend project by a, by building our, you know, custom canvas apps or custom model driven apps, etc. So project is extendable on the CDS side of things. What I do want to point out is is just remember to never customize the default solution. That is not best practice. So if you're doing customizations, always remember to create your own solution and customize your own make your customiz customizations in your own solution. So for that example, I have project customizations that I've made when I edit the sitemap or or customize the sitemap or, or, or add new entities and whatnot, I will always do that in this project customizations solution. So looking at apps, if we want to launch the model-driven app, a project, we'll click on apps. We can see that we have project here installed. So we'll click on project. A new tab automatically opens up and we can access the model driven app a project now editing the sitemap and that's again another video that I'm that I want to make editing the sitemap will get us the different entities on our model driven app such as project projects project buckets pro project tasks and whatnot so I'm not going to dive deeper into the model driven app side of things. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll save that for a later video. But just so you know, from make.powerapps.com, 
You can customize project in your own solution for customizations, and you can launch the model-driven app from there. With that said, that pretty much wraps up the first video that I've that I've been making on project. Thanks for tuning in.